Thank you for being here on today's show, the Successful Unemployed Show. Now, today I am super excited to have a friend of mine who is successfully unemployed and makes his money without having a job. Isn't that just absolutely amazing? That's what we all want. And so this gentleman I met actually working out at the gym, and we got to be better and better friends, and now we come to the spot. This is actually where we come to eat all the time and hang out. And so I wanted to interview him to show you how he makes his money, how he provides for a family without having a job. And this is Eric Upton. Eric, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Dusty. I'm excited. Oh, man. So I'm going to jump right into it. Yep. How do you make money? How do you provide for your family without having a job that you get paid for the hour that you put in? Yeah, most of it's illegal and I can't talk about it on camera. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Actually, uh, what I've been doing is I, I started a business not long ago um, and the entire premise of the business is really this. There's a lot of other business owners out there that waste thousands upon thousands of dollars on marketing that doesn't work. And they think, well, if I shove more money at it this way, or if I spend more money on social media, then maybe I can start to get a return on my investment. What they don't realize is the problem is their messaging. It's not clear enough. So I come in and I help businesses or business owners or entrepreneurs clarify their message so that when they do marketing, it actually works. So yeah, that's kind of how I built my business, how I'm building my business right now. And uh, it's what I do. So all of this kind of involves a lot of copywriting, a lot of website design, uh, a lot of marketing, coaching, training, those kinds of things. That's awesome. Now, I'm, I can absolutely attest to spending money on ads can work and can't. I have spent a lot of money on ads and some of it didn't work and it wasn't very bad. But then at the same time, I was, I've also worked with you to fix my copy and that made everything so much better. And so absolutely. So if you're able to fix your copy, if you're able to work on your message yeah. and help who somebody that comes finds you, they understand what you're, what you're talking about. They understand you and they understand what they need because you showed it to them, then they can change and they become customers. So that's awesome. So tell us a bit about flashback before you started doing this, you know, when you had a normal job and, or even before, even before you met your wife, before you met Christy and, and like, tell us about working and then now transitioning to where you are now. Yeah. Um, so I had the blessing of really growing up under the, the home of two entrepreneurial people. So my parents have always owned their own business. So I've seen kind of the, uh, good, bad and ugly of what it's like to own a business. And our dinner conversations around the table were never normal stuff that families talk about. We didn't talk about soccer games. We didn't talk about what was going on in school. We talked about the business and that was normal life to me. And, um, so growing up, that was kind of the experience that I had, but I was always told, get the right education so that you can get a really good job so that you can provide for a family and live what is presented as the stereotypical normal American life. So that was kind of the path that I took. That was the route that I went. Um, eventually, I finished college. It took me a while. I was mostly frustrated by how long it took to get through the classes um, and, and that I couldn't go at the pace that I wanted to. But finally graduated. And what's interesting is I, I took a very different route than a lot of other people do because I got into ministry. Um, um, around the time that I was going through college. So I um, actually got hired as a pastor and have worked in ministry for about 13 years. And uh, that's actually what brought me out here to Phoenix as well. And uh, then something happened. Um, everything kind of shifted and changed. And the direction that I was going in ministry took a, a huge right turn. And now all of a sudden I'm launching a business. Um, we needed a way for my family to um, generate some extra income. This may be a surprise to a lot of people, but uh, when you work in ministry, you don't do it for the money. Um, you do it because you love it and you believe in it. And certainly that's true of me. Um, and with that, my family needed some extra income to be able to live the life that we wanted to. So um, got involved in helping businesses clarify their message, started working for other people who were doing it, who were coaching, helping other people out. And um, when we transitioned out of ministry work, my wife looked at me and she said, well, hey, you know how you're helping other business owners help other business owners? And I said, yeah. She said, well, why don't you just be the one to help other business owners? And I thought, well, I don't actually have a good reason not to. So uh, that was kind of the, the catalyst to start the business. I went out and got certified um, as a story brand certified guide, launched my business, and uh, here I am today. I remember the time that you said, hey, Dustin, I don't have a job anymore. For whatever reason, you're no longer working at the church. Um, now, 
I'll pause that and say you are starting, like you actually have your own church now. You're planting mm-hmm. a church, which is great, yep. which we'll get into a little bit. Yeah. But from ministry, now you said, you know, I don't have a job. I don't have a way to make money. I said, you know what, Eric, with the skills that you have, with the ability and everything that we've already talked about, I know you can absolutely do this. And I'm excited for you. Yeah. Do you remember that conversation? I do. How did that, how did that I go was, with you? Well, I was hoping I would tell you all of this and you would say, it's okay, Eric, I'll just start giving you money. Don't worry about it. And and that's not what you said at all. So uh, yeah, you encouraged me, you said, with the skills you have and and uh, just what you bring to the table, I'm confident that you'll be successful. And and I, I really did take that to heart. Like it, it meant a lot to me. And what it did is it caused me to really evaluate, okay, what is it that I actually bring to the table? What what are the things that I really enjoy doing? When do I feel like I'm most alive? What am I doing in that moment? And and I, I started to dig in deep to that. And I started to pay attention to the gifts and the skills and the strengths that I have. What it started to reveal is what my passion is centered around. A lot of what I did in ministry was centered around that passion, but that doesn't mean it's only good in ministry. These are skills and abilities that can be used in the pri- or the uh, public sector just as well. So what I found out is for me as a person, I thrive on helping other people succeed. I love doing that. I also thrive in helping people take complicated things and make them really, really simple and then getting them excited about it so they can move forward and find success with it. If I can do that, whether that's in the private sector and in church and ministry, or whether that's in the public sector, like I'm most alive when I'm doing that. When people come to me and say, here's my problem. It's really, really complicated. How do I get past that? I love sitting down with them and saying, okay, the complicated part actually translates to this. Now that we understand it simply, here's the action steps you can take to get from where you are to where you want to be. So for me coming off that conversation, it it allowed me to go internal and figure out what is it that I'm good at. And then it caused me to think about, okay, how do I turn that into a way to provide for my family? And that became the catalyst to build this business. And now I'm going out and helping other businesses find success, clarify their message, put out good marketing. And um, it's starting to generate a way for me to provide for my family. And it's almost been a year now yep. that you haven't had a job. And so I, I can't remember- believe that. A year ago, you were like, what am I going to do? And yeah. then look at where you are now. And what's great is you and I are just normal people. I mean, we're just working out at the gym. We just got to know each other and, and a friendship sparked. And we're like, it just kept, and this has been like, what, two or three years now, mm-hmm. three years now. But then about a year ago, you, you stopped working and now you have your business and you're continually growing and shaping your business as the need arises. And that's what I love about what you're doing is you're saying, you know, I have to provide for my family. Yeah. I'm going to provide for my family, but a job might not be the best way to do it. Yeah. Let me figure out a way to actually do it. And so what you've done, Eric, is you've developed a business and you're continually growing that business, finding new customers. So tell us about the process of copywriting. Now, you're, you you do copywriting, but not just copywriting. It's right. also building businesses, crafting message. There's so much more to it. Yeah. But let's just talk about getting that message out. Yeah. How it... If anybody listening has a business and they say, you know what, I want to work with Eric or how how would I start changing my message to reach people more effectively? Yeah, Uh, I think the first thing that people need to understand is why people listen, what it is that they're looking for, why people buy. My guess is if you're thinking about starting a business or if you have a business that you've already started and you're noticing how much you're struggling in it, struggling to get attention, awareness, um, struggling to even close the sale and get people to buy, what that actually comes down to more often than not is your messaging. The likelihood is you've got a great product or you've got a great service or you've got a great business. The problem is the messaging. And here's what happens. Everyone is talking about the importance of story in marketing right now. The misconception or the misunderstanding is, well, if I need to tell my story in my marketing, I just need to get better at talking about myself. And so people go out there and they start telling everyone about themselves. They say, well, uh, my grandfather owned this company and he started it back in 1846. And then it got passed on to, you know, my grandfather and then my great grandfather in it. And it goes on. And then you start saying, and I've got this dog and I named the business after my dog because he's a really great dog. And, um, also I really enjoy skydiving. And, uh, on the weekends I play tennis and, and you start telling all this stuff, hoping that somewhere in there is a relational connection point between you and your buyer. And what's actually happened is they start listening to you and they categorize you as something they don't actually need. 
Uh, what people need to understand is um, customers buy because they see or hear words that make them want to buy. And we are all in the midst of our own story. And that makes you the hero of your story, me the hero of my story. And every hero in every story is not looking for another hero. What they're looking for is a guide. And the problem happens when businesses try and play the hero for their clients instead of the guide. When you position yourself as a hero, your clients, your customers look at you and they say, hey, I hope you get what you're looking for, but I'm busy in my own journey trying to find what I'm looking for. So I'll see you later. I need to find a guide. And when we show up as a guide for our prospective clients or customers, it shifts everything. All of a sudden, we're not telling our story. We're entering into the story the customers are already telling themselves. And we're showing up as the guide saying, hey, I understand the problem you're having. And in fact, I've helped a lot of other people with that problem. And I know that I can help you. Here's how this works. So what I do is I actually lead people through a seven part framework that allows them to clarify their message, not based on their own story, but based on the story that their customers or their clients or the ideal people that they want to work with are already telling themselves. And I help you show up as the guide so that when you talk to your customers, whether that's through a piece of marketing or even person to person, um, they listen and then they respond and they want to do business with you. So I love that. that's fantastic. And I, 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 I want to tie that into what you talked about just a few minutes earlier was your own personality. You love helping people to get to the next level or to, to figure out whatever problem they have and serving them and taking care of them to where they are, that problem, whatever is fixed. And same thing in business. What we want to do is we want to serve people. Yeah. The more people that we serve, the better our business does and the better our customers, the people that come to us, the better they do. Because in, I think the goal of business should not be to make money. It should be to serve people and the outcropping of that serving the tangible fruit of that is money that you'd make. And so going along with what you're saying with being the guide, when I started teaching people about real estate, I thought there are so many gurus out there, like these experts, these heroes yeah. out there. I don't want to be like that. I just yeah. want to help people. Yeah. It's just, it's just fun for me. And so I thought, I don't want to be the guru. I want to be a guy, just a normal guy, just like us sitting at a table say, Hey, how can I help? And then, and just answering that question. But I love how you tied it into Somebody that would come across saying, I, 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 this is my business. This is, this is, you're not helping me want to buy right. anything that you're selling. And so now talk us, the, let's go through the, you said there's seven steps. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly go through the seven steps. So what's step number one? And let's go through the rest of them. Yeah. The, the first thing that we talk about with businesses is really the transformation. And, and it seems kind of uh, a little bit backwards, but if you don't understand who your customers are now, like like who they actually feel like they are compared to who they want to be, then you're going to create a bunch of stuff that doesn't actually matter to them. So the very first step that you want to do when you're clarifying your message is discover, okay, my client, when I think about them, who are they right now? How do they identify themselves? And then who do they want to be? So if you're thinking about from a really low level area, like let's say we have someone who is in need of lawn care service or something like that, right? Like right now, how they feel is embarrassed about their lawn. Like they look outside and they're like, I'm embarrassed and I'm overwhelmed by the time it's going to take to clean this stuff up. So that's where they are right now. Where do they want to be? Well, I want to be proud of my lawn. I want my neighbors to look across the lawn and actually be jealous of me. So now we've discovered what the transformation is that they want to experience as it relates to the product or service that you offer. So everything begins with the customer. Figure out what is the transformation that they want to experience from this to that. I love that idea because you're, you're seeing them where they are as a opposed to you try just saying, this is all about me, like you're going yeah. after them. So what's the second part now? Then we have to take that and talk about what it is that they actually want. Your customers have a desire. They have something that they want to either have or experience or get out of life. And that's a really important thing to understand. We've already talked about their transformation. They want to go from here to there. But in relation to your product or service, what do they want? Well, in the case of the person with the landscaping issues, what they want is for someone to take care of their lawn. They want to not have to worry about it. They, they want to be proud 
out of their lawn. Those are all things that they want. And the step that comes after that is discovering what the problem is. Um, really what I do, what we're doing is we're taking seven basic principles of any great story and we're applying that to business. We're applying it to marketing. If you've watched movies like uh, the Star Wars movies that are all coming out or the Mandalorian on Disney Plus or, um, you know, even Tommy Boy follows the same framework where there is a person who wants to transform from who they are to who they want to be. And that transformation kind of bubbles up this desire in them, something that they want. And then what happens in every good movie is immediately they discover a problem, something that is preventing them from getting what they want. And problems are a big deal. If your customer doesn't have a problem and if you don't know how to identify that problem, you've got a boring story. You've got a really boring story. Like, Think about this. If um, if the the guy uh, in the movie Taken um, all of a sudden gets a call, and on that call he hears that his daughter's been taken, and he has to go rescue her. Um, but then five minutes later he gets a call, and they said actually it was a big joke. It was actually her roommates. Don't worry about it. And the next hour and a half of the movie was watching him go shopping with his daughter. Would you want your money back from that movie? I would absolutely. A hundred percent. No one wants to see that movie. Why? There's no problem. But when his daughter gets taken and he has to fly across the world and fight a whole bunch of bad guys and doesn't get to his daughter until the very end, that's a story we're interested in. So we want to start with the transformation yep, and then we can look at the problem. Yeah, we start with the transformation, then we discover what is it that they want. What they want, okay. What is it they want? And then from there, we discover what is the problem that's stopping them from Got getting it. that. What's the next step after you realize the problem? Yeah. What's the next step after that? Um, understand with the problem, uh, we're going to break that down into three areas. The first is the external problem, the, the practical thing that's in our way. But you going a little bit deeper, understand your customers don't buy because they have an external problem. They buy because that external problem has produced a feeling inside of them that they don't like anymore and they want to get rid of that feeling. So um, understanding there's an external problem, an internal problem, and also kind of a philosophical one. It creates this worldview of how things should be one way versus another. And then after you've discovered the problem and diagnosed what that is, then you want to introduce yourself as the guide. Now, every guide has two very important qualities that are true about them. And those two qualities are empathy and authority. You need to be empathetic to the problem your customers are facing. And then you also need to present them with the authority that you can solve that problem. Think about Yoda in Star Wars, right? He empathized with Luke Skywalker and that he's got a problem and gosh, Darth Vader's going to destroy the universe if we don't do something. And I know how that feels and, and, and I understand why you're trying to do this. But then Yoda also had the authority of, of being someone who understood how to use the force of, of being a Jedi master. So he had the understanding of what Luke was going through, but he also had the authority to give him what he needed to get there. So empathy and authority is how you show up as a guide. I love that. And so you're really reaching them even more so at their level. Like you're, you're trying to show, hey, I'm a normal person. Like, let, let's work together. I'm going to help you. So what's the next step after that? After that, you need to give people a plan. Uh, more businesses lose more money because of the next two steps not being included in their marketing or their website or even in the conversations they have with potential customers. As a guide, if you don't give the plan to someone in three to five steps, no more than five because then you lose people, and no less than three because then they don't believe it's actually possible and you know what you're talking about. So what you do is you take your plan, which is basically your process of how to purchase something from you, and you break that down into three or five steps and you deliver it to them. First, we're gonna do this, then we're gonna do this, and then you're gonna experience your success. When you do that for people, you take a complex and difficult thing and you make it simple and tangible and that drives up people's desire to follow you towards that plan. But there's another step that even if you show up with great empathy and authority and even if you show up with a great plan and you, you've talked about the problem and you know what they want, you do all of that stuff. If you don't do this next step, you will not make money. 100% of the time. So Eric, what is that next step? If there's something that you're saying, if we don't do this next step, it's all going to fail. What's this absolute awesome next step? Yeah. yeah. Dusty, I want you to think back to when you first met your wife. Um, and, and, and go on this little journey with me. How, how did you guys meet? We met through eHarmony, through, through a website. E yes. Okay. 
Do you remember your first date that you guys had? Yes. Did you go to a restaurant, a coffee shop? Yes. Went to a restaurant. Went to a restaurant. Yeah. Okay. So you showed up for that first date at that restaurant. You went through everything. Things are looking pretty good. And you wanted to have another one, I assume, because you got married. So somehow you got from first date to marriage and yeah. kids and all that. So at the end of that date, when you were ready to say, hey, I think we should do this again. Did you look at your wife deep into her eyes and say to her, would you care to learn more? <laughs> no. No, not at <laughs> Absolutely all. Absolutely not. Because if you would have looked at her and said, do you want to learn more? She would have looked at you so confused and said, maybe I'll get back to you. And you may not be where you are today. Here's the problem. You can have great authority. You can understand pro someone's problem inside and out. You can understand the transformation that they want to do and all of that stuff. And you can have an amazing plan to get them there. If you don't call someone to clear and direct action, they won't take it. People want to be called to action. More and more business owners that I work with and see do not call people to clear and definitive action and they lose money because of it. If your website has a number of buttons that say learn more or get more information or see more or things like that, you're not calling people to action. You're actually giving people excuses not to buy from you. And that's a really big problem. I would say that's one of the biggest reasons why more and more people are struggling with their marketing and in their business is because they don't know how to call people to action. You need to be clear and tell people, hey, we should go out again, or hey, you should buy from me right now. If you don't have a buy now button on your website, or if you aren't clearly calling people to buy now from you in your emails or your marketing, you're losing money. It's the same thing as if you went on a date with your wife, and instead of asking her out for a second date, you said, hey, if you'd like to learn more, um, just click this button here. If not, no big deal. Walmart doesn't stick their cash register in the third stall of the women's restroom for a very sp specific reason. They want you to buy their products. So they stick them at the front. They make it very easy for you to do and very clear how to do that. We need to do the same thing as business owners. And anybody listening or watching this that would think, you know what, I don't want to come across as too salesy or too this, that. <laughs> yeah. That's the, the, I think that's a negative thinking because obviously it's a negative thinking, but it's detrimental to your customers. Your customers want to buy. If you make it hard for them to buy, they're like, ah, I'm just going to give up. They, they, you know, they need something. Like when I'm teaching somebody about real estate, and how to invest in rental properties. I know that this will absolutely change their life if they started investing. And if I don't present that, I'm doing a disservice to them. Yeah. If I'm not making it easy for them, and I'm not just saying, hey, this is it. This is this is where you go. If I'm not doing that, I'm making it harder on them and I'm not helping them out. What are your thoughts? Well, here's here's another thing that you're doing. I completely agree with that. The other thing that you're doing is you're actually communicating a message to your customers that says, I don't believe in my product. When you don't give them a direct call to action, what you are subliminally telling your customers is, I don't actually believe in it enough to ask you directly for the sale. And what they hear is, if the person selling me doesn't believe in it, why should I buy it? And then they don't, and you lose business. We have to call people to action because it is a confirmation of what we already know and believe in the products and services that we offer. That's great. So, so what's, what's the next step? step? So after you call someone to action, the next two steps kind of go hand in hand. You need to be able to clearly show your customers what success looks like and what failure looks like. And failure is really, really important. Failure is kind of like salt to a recipe. Or if you're a musician, it's like the, the crash symbol on a drum kit. You need it there for some of the most important moments in the song or the recipe, but too much of it and you're going to ruin it. So you need to use failure because if you don't show people what life looks like without your products and services, there's no stakes. If there's no stakes in the story that you're telling, there is no reason to hurry or take advantage of what it is that you offer. So failure is important. You just want to be careful and not use it too much. We all remember those commercials where Sarah McLaughlin uh, sang the song in the arms of the angel and they showed uh, pictures of puppies and cages and like they're going to be euthanized if you don't do anything. That commercial did nothing but play that, that crash symbol the whole time and everyone was turned off and no one wanted to watch that commercial and they probably lost a lot of money in donations. But when you show people 
a little bit of failure and you, you raise the stakes and you say, hey, this is what could happen. A perfect example of that is the, uh, the Allstate commercials with the mayhem guy, right? They show people what it looks like if failure happens and you don't have the right insurance. If failure happens, a barbecue could light in the back of your car on the way to a football game and your whole car is toast and you can't afford to pay for a new one, right? That's failure. On the flip side, you need to show people what success looks like. They want to transform. They want to go from where they are to where they want to be. That picture of success, if you show them that clearly, that motivates them to follow you on how to get there. It's one, it's one of the best things that you do well in your business, in your communication. You show people, hey, successfully unemployed means more time to take vacations with your family, more time to spend with your kids on their school projects or um, teaching them how to do stuff or whatever it is. It means more time to enjoy the life that you are living now instead of hoping that at 65 or later, you might have a little bit left to enjoy. That's what success looks like. And, and I, that's a big reason why people are following you and, and watching this and, and listening to this is because you painted a really clear picture of what it looks like to be successfully unemployed and they want that too. Is there any other, what are the next steps or is there any more? Did we miss out anything? No, no that's, that's it. it. I, you, you start, start with transformation. You talk about what the person wants, the problem that is preventing them from getting there. You show up as the guide with empathy and authority you give them a plan. You call them to action and that either leads to success or failure. So Eric, you've just laid out so many great things that we can take away. Now, what if somebody watching or listening to this, they want to start a business where they are helping craft message or tell stories better or copywriting, or they just say, you know, Eric's a cool guy. I just want to do what he does. Like, this is pretty neat. How yeah. would somebody get started doing that? Yeah. yeah. I think one of the first steps that uh, is important to take is you take a look at the businesses that are around you, the people that you know, the relationships that you have, and you start asking to help them. Hey, I've, I've discovered this thing or I've got an idea that I think could help you and you offer to help them. Um, I think in the beginning, one of the biggest things that I wanted to do was help my friends who own business. It, it's what led to the conversations that we started having is I see how messaging is important for you, how can I help? Um, once you start taking, um, I guess, stock of these relationships and these businesses that are there, and you start giving away things for free to just help them, it shows that you're on their side. And that can spur into more conversations that start generating the income, right? Where people are like, hey, that, that stuff that you gave me actually really helped. I changed some emails, I sent this out, this is the results that happened. And then you get to kind of convert that conversation into, man, if you wanna sit down and do more, I would love to help you out with that. Or hey, if you want me to write some of this stuff for you, I'd love to do that for you. And that's when you start generating the revenue and the income from that. Um, you know, the biggest things in the beginning of my journey so far have been um, really understanding the importance of mindset and um, choosing to act in the midst of fear as opposed to waiting for the fear to go away so that I can not act. Um, I don't think I've gotten up once in the morning over the past year and woke up and felt completely free of the fears that go into starting your own business. The fear of, am I going to make them enough money today? Are we gonna be able to pay these bills? Will my mortgage get paid? Will we have enough for groceries? Like, these are the realities of business. I don't wanna sit here and say, well, I'm wildly successful in making, you know, gobs of money that I don't know what to do with. Like, no, I'm in the very beginning. Um, I'm, I'm waking up every morning and, and that those questions are there. Like, am I going to be able to do this? That fear is there and I have to drive forward in spite of that fear to go and take hold of the life that I want to build. Um, that life is there, but it is only for those who are willing to push through the fear and grab that life. I love that. And like exactly what courage is, is acting in the face of fear. Now, stepping up every single day to provide for your family. I think, I personally think that's going to make your business, you and your business stronger and stronger because you're, you're fighting for it. Like you're working hard. And before you know it, like it's been a year now already, next year, it's going to be another year, two years. And the next year will be three years. Now we just keep working towards every single step. We try to get better and better. And so we try growing our business. Now, now Eric, let's jump into the rapid fire round. In the rapid fire round, we talk about some bigger questions, yep. but they should be fairly quick to answer. You should be able to get them off the top of your head. So the Let's first one, so. <laughs> first question, Eric, 
without having a job, now you're working extra, extra hard yeah. with your business, building your business, but we do have a little bit of extra time in our lives because we're not working 40 plus hours for somebody else. How are you making your world a better place, the people around you, and everything else better because you have extra to give? Yeah. Um, we mentioned it kind of earlier in the show, but uh, my wife and I are on the journey of planting our own church here in Phoenix. And um, I think right now that's where the majority of our extra time is going in terms of like building a specific thing. Uh, but I think understanding what it looks like to be dad is another big one. Just showing up really, really well for my kids has been the greatest thing. And honestly, probably the hardest part in those in those difficult moments where you think about, gosh, am I doing the right thing? Should I just go out and get a job? Like it would be so much easier to just get a paycheck from someone else and like leave it all behind. But um, understanding that I'm not just leaving the the work that I'm building, I'm leaving the opportunity to be dad in the way that I am dad right here and now that's a huge sacrifice to go back and work for someone else just for a paycheck. So showing up as dad, building the church are probably the, the two biggest ways that's happening. I love that. That's fantastic. I love being able to be there for my kids as much as I can or as much as I want now because of the businesses that I've already created. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. So from there, the next question is, if you were to go back and give your younger self, let's say <laughs> before, you, before you went to college or anywhere, just yeah. think of a time when you can go back and give yourself one piece of advice and say, hey, self, if you're going to do anything, do this or think this way or whatever. What advice would you give your younger self? I think some of the things that I would say is, number one, uh, relationships matter most. Um, it is never about what you know. It's about who you know. And uh, fortunately, I discovered that early enough al along to really um, pay attention to that and um, drive that forward. Um, so I think that's the first one. And then I think the second one is don't be afraid to sample stuff just because of what other people might think of you while you're sampling it. Um, my personality type, um, I don't know if you're into the Enneagram or anything like that, but it's a ancient personality typing thing. I'm a three. What that basically means is I am naturally hardwired to care a lot about what other people think about me. And, and like, there's all kinds of stuff out there in the world that says, oh, you shouldn't care what other people think about. Well, that's hardwired in me. So you know what? Forget you. <laughs> that's really hard to do. And so I think going back, I'd, I'd tell myself, listen, it's, it's okay to taste because what you taste and try and sample and, and all of those failures that you have along the way are going to lead you to discovering more about who you are and loving who you are more. I love those. Those are fantastic. Now, the next question, if you were to think of one book, one nonfiction book that would actually be a very good book that you could recommend to everybody that could be business oriented, life oriented, whatever it might be. What book would you suggest? Oh my goodness. Um, there are so many books. Like I, I only read nonfiction. Um, I don't read fiction books. So I've got a huge library of nonfiction books. I would say, um, the one that comes top of mind right now, I just, uh, read it is called the road less stupid, uh, by Keith J Cunningham. I'm a huge fan of that. It's very practical. The chapters are very, very short, but he, um, outlines this process called thinking time, uh, which is, important dedicated time, either weekly or daily, where you sit down with a pen and a notepad and you just seek to ask yourself better questions about your business and then answer those questions. And he says for him and his success, it's been the biggest advantage for him reaching to where he's gotten. It's just spending the time thinking. You get rid of your phone, you get rid of distractions, you're not playing music, you're in a section of the house where you're not gonna be bothered and you just sit and you think through this stuff. And he's got a bunch of questions throughout the book, it's huge. I think anything by Patrick Lencioni is just brilliant. Like read his stuff. Um, I like a lot of the Gary Vaynerchuk books. He's just really practical, really tactile, and he doesn't pull any punches. So you go with any of those, you're, you're going to be good. Awesome. I personally love going for runs and not listening to anything, sermons or music or anything like that, and just running and thinking. Yeah. That's like, It really helps yeah. me a lot, especially if you're going to write down what I'll usually have my phone as I'm running. Yeah. I think of something, oh, send myself a note <laughs> real quick, and just so I don't forget that. But yep. yes, absolutely. So last question. What tools, it could be an app, it could be something like literally a screwdriver. What tools are you using in life that are making your, like maybe one or two tools that you can share with us that we should look into? Oh man, uh, that's, that's another really good question. Um, I'm really big into Slack as a communication channel for clients and other people that I'm working with right now. Um, really fascinated by uh, an app called Monday. 
which is kind of a, a tracking software process that allows you to track where projects are, create workflows, that kind of stuff. Um, there's a number of social media apps that I use and leverage uh, from design to um, just posting stuff. Um, I think for me, like I'm, I'm always bouncing around, so I don't know if there's one that I just stick with all the time. I'm always looking for different tools and um, I try and elevate the end goal a lot more than the process that I take to get there. I try not to get too stuck on the process because um, I've, I've seen a lot of people get stuck with process and so locked into it that success just kind of passes them by and they miss out on the opportunities because of it. I love that. That's great. Awesome. So, Eric, it's been so fantastic. You give us so much great information on how, number one, to craft a story well to get our, our customers, but at the same time, how to actually do this business. Now, how can somebody re get a hold of you if they want to talk to you about crafting their message or anything else? How yeah, can they get a hold of you? Yeah, you can go to my website at ericsupton.com. Um, and there's a button on there that says schedule with me now or schedule. It doesn't say learn more. It doesn't say learn more. It doesn't say more info. Um, <laughs> it doesn't say about me or anything like that. Um, it's, it's the first button. It's the only button right there on the, the top of the page or also in the upper right hand corner. Um, just click that button and schedule some free time with me. And uh, we'll talk about whatever it is you need, whether you need help clarifying your message, you need more direction in your business. Um, just want to talk about what I'm doing or what's going on in our life. Um, yeah, any of that. Awesome. Eric, I, I, we're great friends, and I'm so glad that we got to come here and actually, I mean, we, so we love, he introduced me to a thing called pokey. It's basically, basically it's like sushi or sashimi yeah. in a bowl. So we're going to go eat that right now. But everybody that's watching and listening, I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I've learned even more sitting here and talking to him. So Eric, it's been super fantastic, fantastic. having you Thanks. on the show. Thanks, Thanks so much for having me. This has been All great. Right,